Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, we have learned some awesome tools, skills. When you're done with this, you will be able to like commit to any project, open up pull requests, know what a pull request is. You'll really be able to do some cool stuff. Uh, Why well, you want to take the? Why well, you want to take the? Do you have a group of people or no? <laughs> second, second, last chance, Four. last chance. Okay. You know, today is the 29th anniversary of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Really? It came out today. Yeah. I don't know how you know. Is that right? I read an article about it. I saw it. <laughs> I just okay. got a little, a little reminder. Beautiful. Poor movie. Yeah. Would there be a big parade next year? You know, there really should be, right? Yeah, the Von Steuben Day Parade? Yeah. Right. Like that. I was like reading an article about how somebody who's like he, there's like no such thing as a Ferris Bueller today. Like he was like kind of a jock. He like went to like the Cubs game and then he went to like an on park gallery afterwards and it's like that like doesn't exist. He was the popular weirdo. Yeah, he was he was like you know the dweebs, the wasteoids, the goons. They they all think he's a righteous dude. Right. <laughs> right. So bad principle. Uh, except for what's that guy's name? Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to give an overview of Git and also GitHub. So first of all, can anybody tell me what Git is? They want to guess. Nobody is brave. Yeah. Version control software. Okay. Yeah. So what does that mean to you? Um, so like every time you change your code. It like save tracks your changes basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why do you think that would be useful? They don't break the stuff. Sure. Yeah. Maybe you made a change and you regret that change and you want to go back in time, right? Um, another uh, another good use, use of it is you're working with a team of people. I mean, you guys have probably come across this before. Maybe you're like editing a Word document or a spreadsheet and you make a change and then you email that to your friend and then you end up like having like ten different like files called like draft one, draft two, or maybe you come, you're really smart and you come up with like a, like a date convention where it's like this date or maybe this time, and you end up having all these files, right? So version control uh, is what is, is, that's correct, that's what Git is. And version control is um, a way to basically, it's the programmatic way of solving that problem. Uh, and it's particularly very useful for uh, text files. So this could be, you actually could use um, compute if you're writing documents, you could use Git for it. Um, but it's particularly useful for uh, programming. Uh, just because it's a file where you make little changes here and there, and then uh, you know small things have big consequences when you change them. So you want to have that power to go back in time. Um, so there's plenty of companies out there that I, I mean I used to work for one where like Git was like not like version control was not a thing. It was kind of like a nightmare to manage a bunch of different code bases just because it just gets way out of control. So Git kind of simplifies your life once you start using it. Once you start learning how to use it. Um, does anybody here know what GitHub is? Um, anybody know what the difference between Git and GitHub is? Anybody? Sharing. Okay. Yeah. So let's actually go, um, Christopher. If you could go <laughs> over there, buddy. <laughs> um, go to GitHub. Uh, I think you already have it. Open. Okay. So I think a lot of people who are just starting up with this thing kind of get Git and GitHub uh, confused. Uh, they are very closely related, but they're not the same thing. Uh, GitHub is a company, and they have a website. And this website is what you're looking at right here. And it lets you have an account, and you can post all of your code with Git on GitHub. Git itself is actually just a technology. It's open source software um, invented by this guy, Linus, who also invented the Linux, sorry, Linux operating system, uh, which how many Mac, we got 11 Mac users here? So yeah. He, uh, he basically uh, invented the core for what you guys do. Um, so anyways, he, um, he built this thing called Git. Uh, and it's actually not the very first open, uh, or it's not the first um, version control system that ever existed. There have been many, many, many uh, ones before. Does anybody, can anybody name another version control system other than Git? Tortoise SVN, is that Yes, so Tortoise SVN, uh, so the SVN part of it, uh, that is uh, basically a, a predecessor to Git, and Tortoise SVN is a cool, um, uh, basically a graphical user interface on top of SVN. So there's actually um, uh, Tortoise HG, which is another, it's the same people who made Tortoise SVN, 
a do it before mercurial, which is an, is an alternative to Git. It's uh, very similar in terms of how it works. Um, and there's other ones. Can you think of other ones? Okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used that one. Before, I haven't either. But I mean, Baroko and Bloodship. Ooh, I don't know if I know those. Well, there's plenty of, uh, of platforms that are out there that um, have sort of been evolving over time, and Git is basically the latest, greatest, cool thing uh, in this sort of line of version control. So why is it cool? Why is it the latest and greatest thing? What makes it different? Well, it's actually the way that it works in terms of how your uh, information is stored. So if you can think about, um, uh, say, a repository. I'm going to use that word a lot. Um, it sounds a little scary, but we'll get used to it. Uh, a repository is really just, you can think of it as a place to, where all your files live. You can think of it in the most simple sense as a folder, right? So thinking about this really, really dumb way of versioning your own files, so you come up with version 1, you know, file.1, file.2, and that's in a folder. The folder itself is your repository. So the cool thing about Git and what sets it apart from uh, other version controls, uh, version controller systems like SVN, uh, is that every time uh, everybody everybody who's using this particular repository actually has a completely separate copy of that repository when they're working. So you kind of have this idea of committing to something locally. So you have your own repository on your computer. But then when you want to save it on um, publish on the world, you can push it up to GitHub. And then GitHub has its own list for repository. And then say maybe you know you want to take that code and copy down to your machine. Well you can copy down the entire full repository. So what this really gives you is the ability to um, uh, work on things locally. Um, so say you go on an airplane and you want to do some work you want to still be able to um, keep track of your changes, but you don't have the internet, right? Uh, you can keep working with Git and just commit your things locally. Um, and I'll show you. I'll kind of show you what a commit is in a little bit. Um, you can keep working locally, and then when you get your internet back, uh, you know you can just push all of your changes off. Um, another really cool feature is um, it's very easy to collaborate with other people. Um, you don't have to worry about in, in the older days uh, with SVN. Uh, there is this idea that there was only one place where the repository lived, and if I wanted to uh, uh, grab all the files from that folder, it would actually lock the folder down. No one else could touch it, and then I had to do my work, like pull everything down, and then it would release the repository. So you'd have these like traffic jams where people are trying to work on the same thing, and you can imagine, you know, maybe for one or two people, that's not a big deal, but as you get, you know, it's very, it's just very common these days. Uh, uh, code bases and repositories where you have hundreds of people like literally making commits every day, that can really slow down. So having uh, having the repository in, in multiple places and, and being able to commit and push things up is like a very powerful thing to have. Uh, probably the most important thing, the thing that will actually maybe save you guys uh, in the future if you start using Git, is that because if I have my own copy of the repository, Miguel has a copy of the repository, GitHub has a copy of the repository. That means that if you know my computer gets run over by a truck, there are still two other repositories out there, backups, if you will, that you can then restore from. Right? GitHub is a very awesome and I'm sure well backed up system, but if at any point in time GitHub goes away, you're not screwed because you have it on your computer machine, and everybody else who's worked on it has it on the machine too. So it's really powerful, and it's called distributed uh, version. So. I think the first thing um, I kind of want to do and it is um, I kind of want you guys to follow along. And before we do that, uh, who here is on a Mac? So, okay. And is everybody on a PC? Okay. Um, PC people, could you like kind of crowd together um, just so you can kind of be on, in this, on the same page with stuff? Um, they can work very much the same way. Um, but there's a little bit of setup involved that's different for each platform. Does, who does not have Git installed on their computer? Okay. So I think that was probably the first place to start. So, um, Emily, have you ever installed it on a Windows? I've done it before once or twice. Not recently. Okay. So I can, I can help out the Windows people if you want to help out the Mac people. Um, uh, and you've done that before, right? Yeah. You can use Homebrew or you can even download it. So the first step, and I want you guys to actually, I know this is a little bit like tedious right now, but we want, I want everybody to actually get this installed on their on their computer. So um, Windows people, I'll um, I'm gonna go over there and talk to you guys. 
And then Mac people, do you want to just sort of, would you mind sort of just walking people through yeah. how to do that? Um, you can do the easiest. I mean, you can have them download the Git. Hey, probably don't want to get them to solve. Um, yeah, they don't have to one. Yeah. Okay, so wait, let me figure out this please. Yeah. Okay, so um, Windows people over here. So hopefully it won't be too, shouldn't be too bad. Um, yeah. Do you want to do you still here? Is it so you and? Um, oh wait, are you guys ready? Are you? Oh, are you guys here? I'm actually shutting down Windows. I've been on okay. so, yeah. this computer for a couple months. I have actually done filming here. Yeah. 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 We'll find um, Windows okay. and um, Windows 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 so we can use that too. I've already installed it. I just want to do. Okay, uh, so you well, if they do, I never You're all set up already? I'm all set up. Okay. So, um, so um, I'm not sure if it's been lost a long time. Just out of curiosity here, has anybody um, uh, used the command line before? Does anybody know the command line? <laughs> okay, cool. So, I'm actually going to um, do a couple things on the command line. It's basically the raw. Terminal, actually, what you're looking at on the screen right here on Christopher's computer, um, that is the terminal. It's basically uh, a prompt to enter commands that you can tell the computer to do something. And I'm going to basically sh first show you guys how to do a few things on the terminal just to kind of break it down into the different sort of flow and pieces that you actually need to know to use GitHub. But then actually, it's, it's kind of like uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to drive stick, and then you're going to be on in, or then you're going to be on automatic afterwards if you want to be. But I want to teach you like the fundamentals of what's going on first, because I think it's easier to understand, even though it's a little bit more um, scary looking because it's a terminal. Um, but I want you guys to sort of see the different steps we're going to take. Uh, but then actually, this this thing you guys are downloading GitHub for Windows, um, and actually there's a Mac client as well that's got a nice uh, user interface as well. Um, so if you are still scared of the terminal after this, which I don't blame you if you are, uh, you'll have a nice like, friendly interface to do all your GitHub kind of commits and things and, 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 and so on and stuff. But at least you'll have an idea of what's going on. Um, what's, the, the, when it's spinning its real saying, I'm, I'm synchronizing things, what that actually means. Right? I want you guys to know what the terminal will are. Because if you just think of it as a magic thing where you commit things and it just happens to work, it will eventually like go wrong on you, and you will be better equipped to handle that situation if you know kind of what these steps are. Um, so that's why I like this. So you seem to be already set up. Um, still going? Okay. So um, who, how, are you, how are you guys doing? Is everybody else doing okay? Yeah. All right, cool. So did you have them download the, the GUI thing, or did no. you have them download just, just the... Well, just no, they don't. That's fine for now. Um, so um, the next step uh, will be, uh, it looks like you are being asked to connect to GitHub. So you guys, uh, if you don't have a GitHub account, this is the step now where you're going to create a GitHub account. Uh, so it's free. Uh, it's basically just a little, like a little login to any other site. And it's going to allow you to access GitHub and uh, basically store, you can store your repositories on there. You can have an account to talk to other people and interact with other people here sharing which. Um, this is probably the key, the key value of it. So go ahead and create your accounts if you don't have one already. This is Christopher's account that you see up here with his smiling face. So what's their motto? Social coding. So the idea is, um, if you're looking at up here while you guys are setting that up for the rest of you, um, this is what um, someone's GitHub uh, profile page looks like. Uh, what you have here is a list of repositories, again, that word I mentioned earlier. Um, that's basically the code base. So Christopher has a couple of things listed here. He's got one called CTR ship. Go ahead and click on that. Let's see what that is. Um, and you will see this is uh, basically, this is a page you'll see a lot on GitHub if you haven't seen it already. This is actually a page, this, like, this is the file structure for a particular uh, program. So I think. Christopher, this is a website, right? Yes, it this does, is. Uh, 
you too. Already. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, so this is a website, and the actual like code behind this website that's making it run is actually all stored on that other page. You can kind of see how it is. And just like actually your browser or your, your, your file browser on your computer, you can browse the files in there. So like you'll see if you scroll all the way, just click on like the views folder. You know, that takes you. So it's just kind of a bunch of nested folders, and then this is like an HTML file. Um, because if you were really um, HTML. Um, so who, um, do we all have our GitHub accounts? Everybody? OK, for those of you on Windows, I want to see where it, can you put in like the start? Oh, wait, is this not? Oh, that's fine. Let's skip. No. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and use, can you open up your um, start menu down there? And I think it hopefully made a folder for you. Yeah, I can't help you. Um, hopefully, no, let's go open up the app. Let's go ahead and go all programs and see. Where it's installed. Get how many? Yeah. Ah, get shell. Okay. okay. And same for you guys. Oh, okay. still installing? Okay. All right. Um, we'll we'll catch up if you don't mind following me. All right. So everybody else, um, the Windows guys, okay. Um, so you guys have your GitHub accounts and you've installed Git. Um, can you guys, um, on a Mac, open up uh, a program called Terminal? Uh, it's installed by default. You can do you can just search for it. It should be um, on a white box. Um, as a pro tip, uh, I like to use an alternative to Terminal called iTerm, which is just kind of it gives you some nicer features. But for right now, we can all just stick with the Terminal. So does everyone have their Terminal open? You should have a sort of a similar looking box. Um, that uh, cool, awesome. All right, so. Uh, this is the command prompt, and this is where we can uh, basically run commands. Uh, and this is where I'm going to sort of show you some of the atomic steps that you take when you're looking at GitHub. So the very first thing we need to do is to double check that Git is actually installed properly on our computer. And the way we can do that is we can just type the word Git, G-I-T, and hit enter. Okay. And you should get something that looks like this. Uh, it says usage, and then here's some things you can do, and then a whole bunch, a list of things you can do. Does everybody have that? Cool. Awesome. All right. So what this is telling you right here is uh, these are all the different things you can do with Git. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them, don't worry. We're only going to go through the really core important ones. Uh, and those uh, important ones are essentially um, every time you want to run a command with Git, you start with the word arise up here. So uh, you start with git is always the first thing you do. So this is a program. You're saying git, and then you're going to tell it to do something. So you're going to say git commit, git push, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's the syntax we're going to follow. Um, so the very first thing we're going to want to do is um, we probably don't have any repositories installed on our computers. So we're, we're creative yet on our computers. Let's go ahead and create one. And the command to do that is git init, I-N-I-T. So go ahead and type git init, space in between, and hit enter. All right, so it will create a file, docket, inside of wherever you are. Um, actually, you know what? I think what I want to do, and sorry, I'm going to step back just a second. Let's make, um, let's make a new folder before we do this, because I think you probably just initialized a Git um, folder in your user directory. So let's just make a, a folder um, and call it, uh, and, that's, and to do that you can, for the Mac people, the command to make a folder is mkdir for, I think it's the same for Windows too, right? Okay, good. So mkdir on the name of the folder. So we're just going to make a new folder, and it's going to be empty. So you can call it, you know, test project or git intro, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. Um, so Christopher called it. Could you um, make it bigger? Could you do that command plus a couple times, Christopher, on your sure. window, just to make the, the text a little larger? Does that work? Yeah. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Um, then maybe can you hit Apple K? Um. Okay. Cool. So that just clears the screen. So we're back up here again, just so because I was afraid you guys couldn't be able to. So awesome. Great. So we've created a folder. Does everyone have a folder? 
let's go into that folder. So um, the command to, to change directory. So I guess the kind of the, the analog to this is if you're in your sort of like file browser and you want to see and you want to go into a folder, you double click on it. So the equivalent to that is the command cd, uh, which is change directory. And then just type cd space the name of that folder you just created. So uh, for Christopher, it's GitHub 101 class, frequency, whatever the folder is you just made. So we'll go ahead and go in there. It looks like Christopher's in there. Is everyone with me so far? All right, so sorry, I'm repeating myself again. Now we're going to type git init in this folder. OK. And great. And it'll say initialize empty git repository, and then it says it's at this place. OK. So we created a folder called .git, uh, and that is actually your repository. That is the way that GitHub actually stores all your files. Uh, and when you type git init, it initializes an empty directory. So it gives all the sort of tools that you need to know, uh, that, that Git needs to know about what's already here and how, and how everything works with, with the repository. So um, what we should be able to do now is, this is the, probably the first and probably one of the most important um, commands that you're going to use, and you're going to use it often because it's always going to save you from getting into trouble, is git stats. So git space stats. Okay. So this is the um, basically the command that says what's the current state of things with this repository. Um, in some cases, basically you're going to have uh, your repository in different states. Some files are going to be ready to be staged to be committed. Some files are going to be already committed. Um, and, and sometimes you're going to have what's called a merge conflict, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit. Um, it's basically when uh, I make a change and you make a change and they're on the same line. Well, how do you determine which one is right? Uh, and there's tools for helping resolve that, but that's what's called a merge conflict. Um, so this, this would tell you if that was what the problem was. So oftentimes people will get stuck and they'll be like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it won't let me do this. It won't let me push. It won't let me pull. Uh, it's, git status will always tell you what's going on. It's very important thing to use all of that. Um, so it's told us right here that we have, we're on branch master, and it says initial commit, and then it says nothing to commit because there's no class. Okay. So the first thing right here, on branch master. Um, so master, uh, and the idea of branching is, um, we don't have to get too much into it really, but the idea behind um, this is that in your code repository, imagine, have this thing here. imagine you were working and you're making some changes and you're making some commits. Each one of these dots represents a commit. And then we decided, oh, maybe I want to go down this kind of you know, different uh, way and make some kind of crazy new feature that I'm not sure if it's going to work. I'm not sure. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to work. Uh, and so I want to uh, I want to kind of be able to sort of plant like a flag and say, I want to remember and go, be able to go back to the way things used to be when they were simple. So the idea is uh, this would be a branch then. And then I go off and maybe I go out and I cool feature. And then meanwhile, maybe other people are also working on the repository and they keep on doing stuff. And the idea behind this is eventually when I'm done doing the things I want to do with my branch, I then merge it back into master. So this right here is a branch. Um, don't worry too much about understanding that right now. Just know that by default, this branch right here is master, and it's always master. It's like, this is the, the main thing, the main uh, branch of your code. And it's always called master, so when you initialize something, it's going to be called master. Um, so let's go back to the uh, command. Um, thanks for the showing that a bit. <laughs> um, and it says, nothing to commit. Uh, create files and use git add to track them. So we made a folder. It's empty, right? Well, we want to, um, let's do something with this. Let's actually like add a file to this. So, um, one way to do that would be, um, let's just, um, we can use another command called touch. And touch just basically uh, makes a new empty file. So we'll type touch. So you don't have to, no, it's not git touch. It's just type touch. And then let's call it, um, you know, example or something like that. Example.html. You can call it whatever you want. It's just like make a file. Um, it, doesn't have to, it doesn't matter what the type file. It could be .text. Um, so we've made a new file. Okay, so again, all that does is says just make a file called this, and there's nothing. Now let's type git status to see what's going on. Okay, 
this looks different than it used to. It says, untracked files. There's a file that I found, and it's not in the repository. So, and I, and I noticed this file, and I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, this is basically saying that it's, it's checked what the repository is currently in the repository, nothing. And it says, oh, look, there's something new. So what we want to do, say this is a file that maybe it's you know, some great file, we've done some cool thing with it, and we want to commit that file. So the idea of committing, that's probably another fundamental thing that you guys are going to end up using a lot, is committing. So the idea of taking uh, changes uh, that you've been working on and then committing them to the repository. So if you think about it as um, basically every one of these little dots I drew over here um, as a commit. So maybe I you know, made a, the title of my page right here, and then maybe I added a paragraph of text here. Um, it's actually saving a snapshot of that work, and that's what a commit is. It's basically in time, what's the difference between what I did now and what I committed last time? And in the case of the very first time you commit, uh, it's going to be the difference between nothing and then a couple files, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and um, switch back over here. Um, and we want to add this file. We want to tell Git to track this file in our repository. So the command to do that is called git add. Uh, but you can't just hit git add by itself. Uh, you need to give it another parameter. You need to tell it what to add. So the easiest way to do this would be to say git add the name of the file, example1.html. So let's go ahead and type that up. And then when you're done, uh, you can hit that. Right. And now let's type git status and see what happens. OK, so it says changes to be committed. So notice the difference between this. Sorry the color is all green, but we'll, um, um, there's ways to, I can show you guys later. There's a way to make this pretty color so you can like, that disambiguate some of the things that are going on here. Um, so it says, on this, on this original time we said git status, it says, I have an untracked file. But it's actually changed now down here. It says changes to be committed. So that's basically what we did with the git add is we said we want to mark this file to be committed. Uh, we haven't done a commit yet. We're just telling git we want you to commit this file. So this is a step that not all version controlling uh, software does, but it's an important one because say maybe you're working on a bunch of files and you only want to commit some of them. Right? Maybe you've got one junk file that you're not quite ready, you don't want to submit that commit yet, um, you only want to add this other file. So that's why it, it takes you through this extra step of adding things uh, explicitly. Um, there's a few shortcuts to, um, uh, to adding a bunch of stuff all at once. Um, that shortcut uh, would be you type git add and then a period, just a dot. And that's basically saying, add everything in the current folder that I'm in. That's what that dot stands for. So it'll add all the files. If you have folders within that folder, it'll add all of those folders and all those files. So it's a good, it's a little bit dangerous sometimes, but most of the time it's OK if you know what you're doing. And you just say, yes, I want to add everything. I can say git add dot. So we don't need to run that now. I mean, if you, hit, if you actually ran that now, it just wouldn't do anything, because it says, I already have this file. That's ready to be added. So I don't, it's not going to do anything. So we've added, we've made our file, we've added it to be state or to be committed, and now we actually want to commit. So the next step is to do a git commit. And that command is git space commit. But this again also takes some parameters that you need to give. So one of the requirements is uh, that you have to give it a message. You have to say, what is this? action that I took, what is this change that I'm committing, you have to describe what you did. And the reason for this is, again, if you're looking at a repository, um, code and commits don't necessarily speak for themselves. You want to actually have like a sentence saying, this is what I did. So when you go back in time, you can be like, oh, right, I added this file and I made this change or I fixed this bug. You really want to have something that's not only um, descriptive but concise. You don't want to like run a whole paragraph. Um, so it's something that Git will actually not let you commit without a message. Uh, it's just part of keeping uh, good housekeeping, I suppose. Um, so to do to do that commit with a message, we type git commit dash m. So dash m is a, is a flag for our message. And then you can open up 
uh, quotes. So you can either do a single quote or a double quote here. It's uh, either up to you. And you can type in your message here. So git commit dash m and then what? This is you know add an example dot example one dot right? Um, that's a perfectly valid uh, commit message for something we did because we haven't really done it. Too. And then remember to close it with quotes. So whichever one you open it with, if it's a double quote or a single quote, just make sure that it maintains. Um, and then when you're done uh, with your message, you get enter. Uh, it will say committed. And it will give you a little weird number here. And here's the message that we wrote. And it will say zero files changed, but we created one. And it's got some like byte code thing for it. Don't have to worry about that. Okay, so what it said here is I didn't change any files, but I made a new file. And Git actually makes a distinction. So we have made our first commit, right? Yay. So uh, that's great. However, um, it's only local. Um, it's actually only saved on your local machine. I think we're going to do a couple more exercises locally, but then the next step to sharing this on uh, a service like, say, GitHub uh, is, is another step that's uh, called pushing. Uh, but we will we'll get to that in a second. I want to go over a couple more changes. So we have our file. Uh, let's go ahead and type git status again. And it says, uh, you know, on branch master, nothing to commit. Everything looks good because we just didn't commit. That's what we should see. That's like a, this is a, a message that we really uh, is a good, a good time. So let's go ahead and uh, make a change to this file that we already, already have. So. Um, you can edit this file in a lot of different ways. Um, if you're comfortable editing it with like a notepad thing, um, there's actually um, a couple command uh, commands you can run to edit things easily here. Nano is uh, one that would probably come with all the Mac users out there. Um, for Windows, what do you think? Like Notepad or something like that? Um, Let's do it with the Mac way first, and I'll come over to you, you guys, just to make sure we, um, can, we can do this. So go ahead and hit Nano Example One. So this is like a really, really like you know, retro-looking text editor back in the you know it's something that like every computer pretty much has these days still. But obviously, there's more advanced text editors out there. But this one's pretty simple. Um, so this is um, again an empty file, right? We just use that touch command. Uh, to make an empty file. So yeah, Chris, go ahead and, and you know you can type a message in there. That's a great message. Um, or sorry, content, right? We're adding, you know, if this is a website, you know, you can uh, H1 in there or a paragraph, whatever it is. But right now, text file is totally valid. It's it doesn't really matter what we're committing, it's just text. Yeah. Yes, there will be code in here in the All right. So go ahead and um, yeah, I guess you can hit command O and then it will save. Um, for the Windows guys, um, so you guys can actually, um, anybody actually can do this. You don't have to make your edits in this terminal window. You can open up your file in the text editor of your choice. Um, and the trick is, I guess, just finding that file. So wherever, um, wherever it installed Git, it should, there you go, so you found it. Yeah, so, it's in, so for Windows people, it's documents, GitHub, and then it's whatever the the, the um, folder you guys created. So you can go ahead and open up example in um, Notepad. Um, yeah. And, oh, that will be that will be an interesting change. So you change the name of that file. Git's going to notice that, and it's going to think it's a different file. Um, but it's it's pretty smart about guessing the names. So otherwise, Pico would be the same thing as Nano. Pico, Nano, yeah, those are all kind of like similar uh, flavors of the same thing. Um, so. Uh, has everybody been able to? Did you guys finish your spell here? And your comment? Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay, cool. So you made some changes in here. Yeah, Notepad is fine. Um, there are some really great text editors out there. Um, if you're on Windows, my favorite text editor is Notepad. It's free. And it's, it like does syntax highlighting, which is a fancy way of, of saying it makes different words color different things based on what they are, uh, which when you're programming, uh, whether it be HTML or JavaScript or anything, text, syntax highlighting, uh, it saves your brain, it saves your eyes. It's like a very good thing. Uh, yeah, another, another option that I've used is, um, in, is Vim. You can get yeah. Vim for, like, and, and you can download 
both notepad plus plus and mm -hmm. other portable apps. Yeah. You want to stick it on the folder and then it'll open up a nice little menu for you. It's yeah. Nice. So Vim is definitely there are there's a whole like class of people that are Vim like kind of fanatics. Like you either love Vim or you hate it. I think it kind of seems like the way that like I use it. I, I'm actually that maybe I'm weird because I sometimes use it, but I, it's not my preferred text editor. Um, it's a very powerful text editor. It's been around for years. Um, but and it has some really powerful tools with it. You can like once like once like, the learning curve is really high for Vim, but once you get it, uh, you can do things like probably faster than you can. Uh, it's just an really investment. So by no means feel obligated to learn Vim. Um, for again for the purposes of this sort of demo workshop, uh, Notepad plus plus for um, for Windows people is like, again something I recommend for Mac users. Um, I actually recommend a program called Sublime Text. Um, that's uh, it's free to use, and then maybe after like a certain number of saves, it will bug you with like pay us fifty bucks. You just keep closing it forever, or you can pay fifty bucks. Um, so it's pretty it's pretty friendly. Um, it's free software. I use it all the time. Um, and another option would be Coda. Um, so if you Google Coda by a company called I think Panic. Um, they're more about um, having a streamlined process of it gives you like an FTP uh, access and a, and a visual editor kind of all wrapped up into one, which is something that I, I'm not a huge fan of, but some people like, I don't know, I know some people really like it. Um, that one I think you have to pay for, although there might be like a free trial or something if you're interested in that. Um, so, anyways, text editor of your choice. Um, it sounds like everybody, you know, no pass totally fine for the purposes of this, of this example. So, uh, let's go back to our terminal. And Chris has made some changes. Uh, so let's see what Git has discovered here. So let's type git status and see what happens. So I would expect if you guys just edited that same file, you should see something very similar to what uh, Chris sees here, where it says uh, changes not staged for commit, but it sees that the file has been modified. Right? So it knows that there's a file called example1.html already in the repository, but it knows that something changed with it. Right? It used to be empty, and now it's got some text. Right? For you, you're probably going to see something different, because you actually changed the name of the file, and it's going to tell you that. What does it say? That's not that's 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 uh -huh. So you change the file from being called example to example.txt, and Git has decided that um, it, that's a different file. It says, you deleted one, and you, and you created a new one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes it's smart about um, figuring that out. In fact, I actually wouldn't be surprised if um, if we make a commit if it, if it actually detects this. But the next step um, is actually the same for everybody, and means including you. We want to um, add all of our files. So let's actually remember that command, the git add with the period. Let's use that one uh, and see what, how that works. And that should actually help you do some other things. Let's see here. Oh, we need a space after the add. Cool. And now that we've typed git add with the period, uh, now let's hit git status. Let's see what it says. And it says new file, and then it still says the one is deleted. Okay, so the difference between what you did and what we did is uh, when you add files to git, um, it only does the adding. If the deleting is actually a different command. Um, and so in your case, let's go ahead and um, remove that old example. So you can actually type git rm, so rm is command for remove, and the name of the name of the same thing. Cool. And now I get status. Okay, so it's we track that we're deleting the file and we're making it, right? Um, so we're all ready to do a commit now. So does anybody want to tell me what the command to commit is? Commit dash. Dash. M and then our message. Right, so in Chris's case, yeah, you may have added some some content to example one that issue. Does it does it does it track which files are changed each yes. time? Yes. So we we wouldn't have to say like we changed this file name. We just say we added some content. Yeah, you could say that. Um, I'd say, and I'll show you why it's maybe a good idea to be more specific in just a second. Um, now that we've made a commit, let's type. Uh, let's actually let's have a new command called git log. 
um, space LOG. So hit enter. And this will show us all of our commits that we've made in the past. So very often, um, you're going to be looking at your commits and your history kind of like this. But you're not necessarily going to see the files that were changed um, up front. I mean, there was obviously ways to see that. But really what this is meant to be is you know, who made the commit, when, and then just the message. So in that case, it's good to sort of be specific about files. I usually am uh, when I make my commits and say, I, I edited this file, or I edited this part of the website or the program. Right, um, so. It probably saves you extra time later on. Yeah, it's, it's worth doing. I mean, it, that, it definitely seems silly right now, I know, that we're, our commit messages are probably longer than the like, changes we're actually making. Um, just, it's a good habit to be in, though, because uh, very often um, you're, you're going to be making lots of changes, and it's just good to be able to have that history and go back uh, in case you make so, uh, it, just so you can see what that answered my question perfectly. I was wondering what it would look like. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so this is Git log. And actually, this is a good um, point where we maybe let's um, transition a little bit over uh, to GitHub for a second. And then we'll link these kind of two things up. So going back to the web browser, um, an equivalent to um, what we have. Uh, so yeah, Christopher, maybe go back to your account. Um, Maybe, yeah, I think you could yeah, click on that. Or maybe, oh no, go, I think, click them over here. We'll click you to your personal page. Um, and then click on, yeah, the CTA hardship again. And then um, let's click, so this is again that file structure. So this is obviously a very a pretty way of looking at all the same stuff that you guys have been working with. Um, click on the commits tab. So this commits tab is very much as, as the same view as that git log, right? It is who and when and the message, right? That is exactly equivalent to what we have on our terminal, which is just you know the kind of uh, uh, terminal looking uh, uh, view. So this is again, this is um, this is a prettier view of that. Um, and so I think now let's um, let's get to kind of the fun stuff and actually commit this and push it up to GitHub. So yes, it's silly. We've just made one file and we want to, you know, it's not necessarily uh, going to make anybody save anybody time and think and nobody's going to think your project's great or anything. But you'll get the idea about how to do this process. So um, as I was showing you before about the idea of a master. Um, there's also an idea of um, multiple places that you can push to. So again, you have a repository on your computer, right? You, I mean, you type git, git init, and you know, you've been doing all these commits. That all has been committed, committing to your local repository. What you want to do now, and the way that git works, is you want to take that entire repository and push it up to someplace else. And in this case, we're going to use git out. We're going to push something up to git. So, what we have to do first is tell Git where to push to. It's not going to know by default, right? So the very first thing we're going to do is, since we know we're going to push to GitHub, is to go to the GitHub website and create a new empty repository for us to push into. So you can go to that on the uh, browser window. And if you're logged into Git, uh, GitHub, you should be able to go to this little button up here with a little plus sign that says create a new repo. And this is where, so it's going to add again, add it to your person, your username. And then you can call it whatever you want. You can call it the same thing you called your, named your folder. Um, you can call it whatever you want. And actually, Git doesn't really care. Um, for sanity, it's usually good to keep things consistent on your machine um, and on GitHub. Uh, description is optional, like Christopher is doing here. Um, this is the part where GitHub makes money. Public is free. So if you're pushing this out into the world, you can have the, an infinite number of repositories, and they're all open, so as long as they're all open source, it's free. The more you want to make it private, uh, which there are plenty of reasons to do that, uh, but right now we probably don't care about giving away our top secret uh, one commit or two commit project. So, um, but if you want to make a private repo, that's where you have to start paying to get monthly services. Uh, Software so um, for, for our purposes, it's free, and we don't, we'll never have to pay. So we'll keep it public. Um, 
You do not need to do this. It's optional to uh, initialize this repository with a readme. Um, that's a convention that um, is, uh, everybody follows and you guys all probably should follow. Um, a readme file is just a file describing what is this, or what is this thing, uh, this code base. Is, is it a website? If it is, where is that website wants to do? If it's some sort of a widget or tool, what is that widget or tool? And it's really meant to be sort of not only descriptive, but like almost a, actually an instruction manual to tell other people how to use your code. And that's actually like really important and one of like the most important parts of, of sharing and, and using open source code is being very thorough and descriptive about what you're doing and how, how people can follow your um, So feel free to, let's not check that for now, just for the purposes of this, we can uncheck that. We can always add our own review later, maybe we won't. Um, but don't check that box right now. And then uh, with all this stuff, let's just hit create repository. Okay, so you will now notice that you're at a page github.com slash your name slash the name of the repository you created. And it's giving you some instructions here. So this is different than uh, what it would look like if there was code. There's nothing here. And it's saying, you don't have any code here yet. Here's some instructions on how to uh, get your code to show up here. So this is actually some steps we're going to follow right now. So we can skip these steps. Remember, get init. We've already done that. Um, Git add, you know, we, these are like the same commands I just showed you, and this is what GitHub is literally telling you to do um, anyway. So now you guys know I'm not full of shit. Like, this is really real. <laughs> GitHub is telling you to do this. Um, but actually, what we care about is we want to push an existing repository to the command line, right? So we're all in the command line, and we want to actually just take what we've done so far and just share it with everybody on GitHub. So the command you want to run is the one that Christopher just copied. Um, it's that first line there, and it's going to say um, git remote add origin and then a link. OK, so let's break this down and just describe. Why does that work for most of you? Yeah, we'll get, yeah, I think we'll get there. Um, if uh, and he's using HTTPS, so it's oh, fine. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to there. It'll prompt me for my password because yeah. I hadn't set it up. We'll get to that in a second. I know it's not a time. Let's just stop and, and slow down a second and just sort of parse what this means. So git, right, we know what git means. So we're going to use git, and we're going to use this new command called remote. And that is essentially uh, the way that you tell GitHub where you can where you can push things to. So a remote is uh, an endpoint somewhere out there in the internet. It could be GitHub. Oftentimes it will be. It could be some, some other service that also uses git. It could be if you're at the company and you guys have, this is a common thing. I mean, I'm sure thought once you guys have your own. Uh, GitHub service that you guys store all your stuff on. Because, again, you can host private repos on GitHub, but they charge you for it. If you have enough repos, it's probably worth it to host your own. Right? So that's that's why it doesn't, it, 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 it's actually, you can have not only um, different remotes, but you can have multiple remotes. Um, and there's actually a service called Heroku, which I use a lot to um, host my websites. And it uses Git. And to Basically, to push changes to, to deploy a website, I actually can use Git and add a remote to Heroku, and it will handle um, basically publishing the website, which is perhaps for another time. Uh, so Git remote, and then we're going to say we're going to add, and we're going to call this thing origin. So just like we kind of have these different branches, uh, master. Um, we can have we can name different remotes. So in the case of this, we're calling it origin because we're going to say GitHub will be basically our our true source of everything. We want sort of GitHub to be um, the home base for all of our for all of our. Um, so we call it origin. Um, again, if I was using a service like Heroku, I would call it Heroku. Or if I was using something like ThoughtWorks, this thing would be to Heroku or, whatever, or to to ThoughtWorks server or something. Um, and then we're actually specifying a web address that we got from GitHub that actually takes you to that points to that specific repository that we just created. So we all have that copied in our uh, 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 and pasted into our terminal. Let's go ahead and hit enter. All right. So it doesn't give us a response, but it didn't throw an error, which means that yay, it added the remote, and we can prove that we have that by typing git uh, no git status won't do that. Uh, git remote dash v, which means verbose, and hit enter. 
and it will show you all of the remotes that we have listed in our, uh, for our repository. So it knows that so it's got two things called origin. It's actually specifying fetch a place to fetch from and a place to push to. Uh, it specifies sometimes those are different. Most of the time it'll be the same. So this shows us that we actually do have our, our origin added in. So now what we want to do is we want to actually push this code up to GitHub. And the command to do that is git push. You know what the other two are? Origin. Right? So origin is telling us where we're pushing it to. And then master is which branch we are pushing. So we have a lot of options about what we can do. In the beginning, we only have one branch, and it's just master. We only have one place to push to, and that's origin. So actually, and I, I, I'm a little reluctant to tell you this, but you can cheat at this stage and just have git push. But for being, um, just for keeping things consistent so you don't get into trouble later, it's good to be verbose and say git push origin master. Because very often times you may have multiple branches, and you may have multiple places to push to, and it will complain at you if it doesn't know which one to push to. So I like to tell everybody to continue to be as robust as possible in this command and specify origin and master just so you kind of get that brain in your system. So git push origin master, let's hit enter and see what happens. Okay, so it's gonna should ask you for a username. Uh, Windows people, is it asking you for a username? Mine didn't get past the oh. get remote at origin. Oh, okay. What does it say? It's a fatal remote origin already exists. Oh, that's interesting. Did you do it twice? No. Do you get remote again? I think you have to take it. I wonder. So we need time part. So we need time to get remote dash v. It actually knows. It says fatal origin is not going to be Did you misspell origin? That's what I always do. No, I don't think you did. So Mm -hmm. I think it locked that. Did it lock that? Yep. Get most it should be awesome. It should be awesome. But we don't have to tell you Oh, actually. Okay. All right. We'll make sure. So, let's here. So it like synchronized already and it notices that you created one on GitHub. But it doesn't actually see GitHub here. You created a folder inside of GitHub. Huh. Here. So I get to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it created an origin for you already, but it did. And it doesn't seem to be correct, so that's kind of strange. Um, but that kind of demonstrates that I can call it whatever I want. <laughs> I can call it origin, I can call it you know, uh, bread, whatever, right? So, but it's a, it's a convention to call it. Um, so, oh, yeah, Christopher. So, for those of you who are um, where Christopher is, so Windows people, it sounds like because you downloaded it, 
code for Windows, it already knows how to authenticate you automatically, so it didn't ask for a password. So, however, if you if you do get prompted for using your password, it's the same one you use when you create a GitHub account in the first place. So just enter that in, and if it went according to plan, we should be able to go back to our browser and see all the code that we committed on um, GitHub. So let's go and oops, did you enter your password? Now? <coughs> Been a while. Lowercase master server. Sorry. Sorry. Make sure you do lowercase now for master. Do you remember your password? You can try it. It's going to work. Hold on. Um, does everybody else have theirs showing up on GitHub? Yeah? Ah, yeah. So, what that you remember that word was actually when you committed. You can see your screen. So, about 16 minutes ago, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, so this still is a clean screen, right? Are you having the same problem with the. Yeah, I don't know why I just that. So, what I did is I created another. Okay. So it's called merge. I didn't know this was new, but so that you can move it. Yeah, you should. And then it's making Wait, that's weird. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to use more. <laughs> <laughs> so you just called it what? I just called it merge in two. Merge in by origin. Okay. And then you also you also could get an empty cup stream as well. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So Christopher, go ahead and reload yeah, uh, okay. your GitHub page for okay. your repository. Okay. Let's see what's up there. Does it work okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you don't get help. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, oh, you have to call it. Click on repository. Yeah. Get out one on one class. There you go. And, hey, there's our file. And we, we authored it 18 minutes ago. You can click on it and open up the file, and I'll show you what it looks like. So that is how you push to GitHub. Um, uh, so I think with that, you probably have like a pretty good understanding about all the different like, features of what you can do with it. For you Windows people, you'll probably notice that that app you downloaded has all kinds of cool features like create new repository or clone to my local. So um, feel free to use that uh, if you're more comfortable with it. Um, but my goal with this was kind of to show you the different things that it's actually doing for you. Um, and again, if you get stuck on anything, you'll have a better chance of figuring it out. You'll always be able to go back and type git status to figure out what's going on with your repository. Um, even with all their fancy stuff with the, those scrap user interfaces, they sometimes still do weird things. Like, and sometimes they do weird things to get in our way of our normal you know, flow. Uh, so um, I think I'll give you guys one more um, one more command, which is really useful, um, and, and then we can switch to just talk about a couple of the features of uh, of GitHub. Now you guys have a GitHub account. Um, so say you guys are browsing around GitHub and you see some really cool project that you like, and you want to download that and you want to use that yourself. Um, so there's uh, GitHub gives you a way to just download all the files as a zip file. That's for people who don't have GitHub accounts. But we have GitHub accounts now, and we are like empowered with our knowledge of the command line. And now we can actually clone uh, one of these repositories and actually do. Um, we actually even commit to it. We can treat it like it was our own repository. We can actually clone someone else's work and start adding to it on our own. So let's go, Christopher. Let's find a cool repository that you like. Um, a good uh, no, on on GitHub. Sorry, 
Um, a cool place to go find awesome repositories is if you um, if you Google something called GitHub, uh, just Google GitHub most starred. Um, so you can you can star a repository to kind of like bookmark it, uh, and a good way to determine one of the more popular uh, open source repositories that are out there is to go to this page. So it's github.com slash popular slash start. So this is the most starred stuff yeah. in, uh, in GitHub. Uh, Bootstrap is uh, uh, a framework for doing HTML and CSS. Um, and they have 51,000 stars. So Chris, so Chris, just pick one, maybe hopefully one that's not super uh, heavy. Uh, Checkle's probably OK, yeah. Bootstrap would be fine, too. So, Say we're browsing and we find a really cool repo and we want to do something with it. So now actually you'll notice um, that there's this little section up here above every repo, which gives you instructions on how to clone it. And so what you can do here is you can copy this link and you can make sure to keep it on HTTP. We'll, we'll worry about the SSH stuff later. Um, grab that link and we back in our command line. You can type git clone, and then paste in that link. Um, actually, before you do that, um, go ahead and enter. Cancel that. Let's go out of a different directory. We don't want to okay. We want to make a new, um, we'll actually make a new directory. So we'll get out of our GitHub 101 class or whatever file you're, well, you're in. So Sorry if, I, if you guys hit enter twice after you. Oh. Um, so actually, don't make a new directory. Um, you don't have to. So one cool thing about cloning is it'll actually make a directory for you um, and name it whatever it was on GitHub, unless you tell it on Git. So you can just type git clone and then paste and hit enter. And it's cloning and it's creating, it creates a new folder for you called Jekyll and it grabs all the things and then it makes a new folder for you. Uh, and then you can go into that folder. And now you can type all the commands that we can type before, right? So git status, right? You can type git log and see all the command commits. So here's here's real people doing real work, and you can actually see their work just like you can uh, the stuff we did, right? So you can kind of go back in time and see what they've done. Um, and you have all those files too. So if you want to modify those files, uh, use it for your own. Uh, ah, to get out of this, you can hit Q. Um, so now you guys have the ability to basically go and grab anybody's open source code base and bring it down to your computer, and you can fiddle around. Um, and sometimes, um, you know, you don't always want to do that, but it's useful to know. A lot of times, and this is something that we do a lot of this at the pack night, is people show up and they're going to work on a project and maybe you want to collaborate with them. Well, the first step is really to uh, clone their project and, and bring it on your computer so you can start doing stuff to them and then committing to it. So one thing that's really, another really cool thing that's cool about cloning is that it automatically sets up a bunch of things for you that um, we have to set up manually for that first time when we created our repository. So remember when we had to create an origin, we had to tell it to point to GitHub? Well, because we cloned from GitHub, it's smart enough to know what origin is already. So if you want to push back up to um, uh, master, uh, uh, up to GitHub again, you can do it. Um, I'll say that if you clone somebody else's repository and they haven't given you access to it, which is like something you could have to do on, on GitHub, it's not going to let anybody push to anybody else's repository. You have to, in GitHub, specify who has that privilege. Um, uh, the alternative to that, um, and we can get into this a little bit, um, some of the cool other cool things you can do on, on GitHub. Um, let's actually do this a little bit differently now. Um, I think I'll spend maybe a time. Okay, I'll go to eight just so we don't go too much over. I'll give you guys a couple more kind of cool things you can do with GitHub. So, um, all right, so in this case of Jekyll, so Christopher has cloned a project called Jekyll, and you want to, say you want to make some changes to it, but you want to, um, you want to push it up to GitHub, but you don't necessarily need to push it up to the original Jekyll. Maybe you're making Christopher's awesome version of Jekyll, right? And you're starting from what they have, and you want to keep going. So the actual proper way to do that on GitHub is to fork it. So forking is another uh, open source term, which basically means you've got your stuff over here. I'm going to grab it and make a copy of it, but it's going to be a separate, uh, basically a separate repository for it. And I'm going to do all my work over here. And I'm going to kind of 
Um, I can still kind of pull in your changes from the original, but I don't have to. I can just keep pushing on my own. So um, this where you want to go to um, go to GitHub, and instead of cloning it, uh, that Jekyll repository, um, let's go ahead and click the fork so button. You even this. This. Uh, you can like, clone it to wherever you would like. Uh, and it'll show you this awesome, uh, awesome little graphic while it's doing it. So it's basically, it's like the same thing as a clone, except that it's doing a couple other steps for you. It's creating a clone of it, then it's automatically creating um, a new repository for it, for you under your name. So now it's it's gov and trenches slash check, right? And it's and you actually have full access to this repository. You can push to it, control to it, you can delete it, you can do whatever you want to, it's yours. Um, and it actually tracks where it came from, which is a pretty neat thing. Um, if it, in, in the future maybe you want to keep maybe and this is obviously gonna happen with Jekyll and plenty of these open source projects, is they're continually being worked on. There are people that keep on adding more features, keep on um, making it better. And sometimes maybe if you're a fork, you want to do your thing, but then you want to keep getting the new stuff. So you can actually pull in the changes from the original while you're working on your own. And again, Git kind of lets you do that. I won't go into the details of that because it's more old and more of an advanced thing. Um, but now that we've forked this thing, we can actually um, we can actually grab this, and if we want to make um, if we go back to um, our terminal. And let's create, uh, let's go back out of this folder. And let's say git, oops, so, yeah, uh, git clone, um, and then paste it, and then let's give it a new name. So let's call it Christopher's Jekyll. Right? So um, it will try to create a folder called Jekyll otherwise, and we're actually going to, I'll show you. Um, oh, no, don't change that. Keep, oh, sorry. Keep that to what it was. Um, because that's what it, it has to know where to point to in GitHub. Well, let's actually give it a folder name and call it, you know, Christopher General or something. So space and then no, uh, yeah, keep that all the same, space and then the name of folder. Yeah. Drug, yeah. And hit Just like that? Yeah, that'll work. And so what that does, that sort of shows that mm. you can clone to any folder you want to. You can call that folder whatever you want. And that's in this case. We have a clone of the original Jekyll, but actually now we just clone our fork of Jekyll. So we want to have a thing or something. Like that. So now you can you have all the same code that I showed you before that other clone, but you can now you can push to your own repository. You can um, I'll show you guys a couple other really cool features. If you guys are not programmers, um, I would say that the killer feature for GitHub is there's still actually useful things that you can do with GitHub. If you, if you don't even plan on learning how to code, and that's their issue tracker. So um, a lot of ways that people kind of keep track of the projects that they're working on is they use GitHub's issue tracker. And let's go. Do you have a, an example? Of I'm going to pull up the civic needs. Sure. App. Yeah. Good idea. Um, if I can remember where it's at. Is it? Yeah, do you have access to it, or it might be in the Ryan's right? Oh, here we go. I'll just do. Okay. Uh, This is a guy, Ryan, he comes to the hack thing, he works for the city of Chicago. Um, he's a big open source guy. Um, and it's cool because you can see like real people when they actually like we actually see their code, which is neat. Um, so this is a, an app that Christopher uh, that Ryan created called Civic Needs. Um, it's, like, it's a little bit of a work in process right now, uh, progress right now, but they're actually using this issue tracker. So you'll see up here there's uh, this thing called issues. And this is basically kind of like a task, like a, a super task to-do list. Um, but it's for a whole team of people. And you can basically, it is meant to integrate directly with um, how you're using it. So you can file bug reports here. You can say, oh, add this feature. And one of, some of the cool things that you can do with it is you can actually point to particular code uh, commits in the, in the text here. And it's smart enough to like link to that. Um, so, yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. You're actually adding a, an issue yeah. right now? Okay. I meant to do that earlier. Okay, cool. Um, so, you, you can basically, like, people who are not really coders can sort of say, hey, I noticed this thing isn't working, or it'd be cool if you guys added this feature. And this is actually a great way for you to submit that 
But then, actually, if they're using this process the way that it's intended, you can actually get good, like, people can actually, like, the developers can say, oh, I'm working on your issue right now. You actually see the code commits where, where they're actually referencing this issue. Um, so whenever you hit submit that, you'll notice that it created an issue and it gave it a number, issue number three. So remember when we were typing our git commit messages? You can actually, when you're working with GitHub, um, you can actually uh, type in the, a pound sign with the number, uh, the issue number, and it'll actually know to associate that commit with uh, this particular issue. So, so I'm working on this bug fix, uh, relates to issue number three, and it'll automatically make that uh, association. Do you have an example of, of that? I can show you um, if you go to uh, yeah. Smart Chicago, I have. Um, it'll show you some of that stuff. What a kind of what like an advanced. Um, there you go. So this is a, a an organization that I supposed to do some work with. Um, so yeah, Chicago Atlas is a good one. Um, to open that up. We have an issue track. We're using this a lot. This is basically how we're communicating our workflow back and forth. And so let's go to um, maybe one of these closed issues here. Click on, say, uh, um, you know, click on down a little bit. Uh, yeah, so maybe like click on, the, yeah, click on this. That's a core request. Um, so you can see, um, you know, here's my my description of things. I've got some commits uh, associated with it. So this is actually um, uh, what's called a pull request, which it's kind of related to the issues. Um, so say uh, I was working on some uh, some cool feature, and as you know, this often happens with open source software. There's a group of core people that work on it, but one of the really cool things about it is anybody can contribute, and the way that people can contribute without even I don't even have to know who you are. I just can work, look at your code and make some changes that can do what's called a pull request. So I've made some changes, and I want to submit them to you, the master of your repository, um, for your consideration. right? And essentially it says, I made these changes. Look at all my changes. What do you think? And you can either choose to merge that into your code, or you can ignore it, or we can have a conversation about all that stuff. And so this is all driven by the GitHub issues system, which is just really powerful. Because again, you can basically combine people talking with code, um, and things are just really strongly interrelated to each other. So this is how we work. Um, I mean, this is how we're, we've been working on this open source project for, for like six months now. And this is basically our process of keeping track of what pro features to do, um, you know, when things that bugs that are reported and stuff like that. So the issue tracker is a really powerful feature of GitHub. So even if you don't know how to code, it's useful. I mean, some people, I've seen actually there's a guy who kept track of his to-do list for his house renovations on GitHub issues. Um, you know, and you can like throw images in there, and it, it supports all kinds of cool stuff. And you can tag it with labels, so it gives you some ones out of the box. You can create your own, you know, so you probably have like, like you know, porch renovation section or something like that. Um, so you can do a lot of cool things. You can set the milestones. Um, you know, so this this Chicago Atlas project we're launching soon, and so I've created a launch milestone where you can assign things to that milestone and get the due date, and it tells you how close you are, how many issues have been closed versus that are open. So um, really powerful tool um, and useful for non-coders as well. Um, so I think I'll stop there. Um, there's plenty more to go into, but I think you guys kind of have like a, a sort of a sense of what is possible. Um, and you guys have, you know, maybe you didn't expect to learn how to use the command line today, but you know a little bit more about that now. Um, I understand that you're a little bit, um, a little bit afraid of it, but hopefully not as much as you were before. Uh, and again, feel free to keep trying it out and getting and using the command line. But I understand if you guys want to use, you know, get that for Windows interface, which has all that so it's, so it's nice bells and whistles. And there's another one for Mac as well. I think it's just called, I don't know what it's called, but there's a uh, basically a nice graphical user interface for, for Mac as well, which you basically clone things and it does all this. So I'll stop there. Um, I'll be around you know, till 10. So if you guys have particular questions, um, feel free to bug me about them. But um, yeah, thanks. Good, good job. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy.